I'm Sewi. Um, basically, what is, I, as I said just now, is I pretty much help one out in all the uh, webcam and edit camp stuff. It's like uh, I'm the video recorder for edit camp and pretty much help him organize webcam as we go. So we are kind of like partners in crime in a way. <laughs> uh, back in 98, um, just to sort of set the scene a bit, it's like uh, back in 1982, I was born in this uh, town, the royal town of Perak called Kuala Kangsa which is in between like Ipoh and, Par uh, and Taiping. It's like, we kind of like, we are in the, there's like, we are, there's like two known towns in Para and we are some of like the unloved child in the middle kind of thing. Uh, anyway, it's like uh, my dad was, it's like when I was born, my dad was like 20, 28, my mom was 25. And I've grown up like, in an environment where my dad was the more stricter family side, uh, owns a bakery and everything. And my mom was the, all hells break loose, more the kampung girl kind of uh, personality, essentially. And uh, surprisingly, my mom was, uh, it's like, as I grew up, it's like my mom was a bit of a clean freak. So it's like she's really OCD about uh, getting everything like spotless and everything. So it's like she would make sure that she would spend hours just to make sure every floor was being mopped properly, every single item in the shelf was dustless and everything. So just imagine that, just that kind of a, growing up with a mom like that, it's like, oh, she doesn't really have time to really like uh, give us much attention and everything. So the way that she saw like, um, saw like take care of us is essentially hire a nanny, not a human, but like, like our iPads and iPods that we're having now, back then it was TVs and VCRs. If anybody still remembers one of those tapes to me. So the first she does is pretty much like, okay, she'll just clunk us down in front of the TV, take out a VCR, it's like just pretty much turn on the VCR, turn on the TV, take some tapes and pretty much like let us watch reruns of um, Disney cartoons and uh, Sesame Street. That's pretty much how I learned my English from, it's like from a very young age essentially. It's like, is due to the exposure of constantly listening to uh, Ernie and Bird, Big Bird and everything. Sang, singing, dancing along. It's very interesting because it's like, uh, well, I, I'm kind of, it's like, I'm kind of the introvert, shy kind of person. So it's like, to me, it's almost like the television, the VCR and everything. It's just, I don't know, it's just a very comfortable space for me to be in. And it's like, not to say that it's like in my kindergarten years where I don't have friends or anything, just that, it's, it's, it's like it's when as an introverted guy it's sort of like crowds really intimidate me so it's like sometimes I'd rather so sort of like just sit there in the corner just read some books or whatever. So as I sort of like go on to like primary school so it's like then it's like that's the time when my mom actually took over a cake shop from my aunt as my aunt have to go to work uh, in, in KL and somebody has to keep care of the business. So like consider it's like my mom was a clean freak to begin with. Now she's working, it's like she's pretty much managing her own cake shop in the first place. So it's like, it used to be this much attention time, now it's like even fewer. So, and it's like, we, as, as we are pretty much like grown kids, it's like uh, cartoons doesn't really like work anymore essentially. So it's like the next kind of nanny that we saw like being sh shuffled into is actually classes and tuition. <laughs> I mean, it's like, honestly, just, let's, let's just be honest here. It's like, um, being Chinese and all, you kind of expect your parents to be tiger moms and tiger dads, who sort of expects you to excel well in school and pretty much do everything. It's like, make sure that you do get great grades and everything. So it's like, it's pretty much a given, but at the same time, it's like, she doesn't, but that's, it's like, one interesting thing is that she doesn't really force <coughs> us into taking classes that we don't like. I mean, she pretty much considered to, pretty much let us like, okay, do you want to uh, learn the piano? We said, ah, no. It's like, taekwondo is like, ah, too much, like, this is <coughs> not my thing, kind of thing. She doesn't force on me. What I end up, like, learning through is like, two, the two classes that I enrolled in is, uh, one of them is actually art classes. You know, it's like, um, pretty much, you send your kids six years old, like, just carrying, like, a A3 school skate paper, kind of paper kind of drawing pack and uh, pretty much color pencils and everything and you start to learn how to draw basic shapes, how to draw like uh, still life essentially it's like okay just have a bowl of some vases, a bowl of fruits, just like just draw something or probably just ask us to Im just imagining like a scene, it's like just it's like okay imagining a day in a park, it's like you know those kind of um, drawing contests like when it comes to like primary school competitions usually it's like 
okay, draw a scene in the park, or pretty much draw something in your home, kind of thing. It's like, these are actually, those are the things that we are being taught in art classes in the first place. And to be honest, those kind of classes is a bit dry and boring. I mean, especially in, in the age, in a very young age, where it's like imaginations wild, run wild, and it's like I'm pretty much exposed to Western cartoons like all the time. It's like all the exciting. It's like my brain is constantly like uh, thinking of really exciting things along the way. I mean, it's like, and that not not only that. It's like that's also the time when uh, Jap Japanese manga is starting to get into mainstream. So it's like. You, uh, pretty much all of us has grown up with uh, comics like uh, Doraemon, probably Slam Dunk, uh, Saint Seiya, uh, some, of, some of these comics. It, it, it's like it's starting, it's some, it's like, so it's like, it's kind of a combination of Japanese manga and like Western cartoons that I blend it together. It's like, it's like, it's a whole, it's a very interesting year to be in in the first place. So it's like, so what I ended up doing is pretty much like, just sitting down there, I mean, it's like, we have a bunch of friends who likes to walk, read like read like comic books and pretty much like watch, watch cartoons. We were just sort of like, hey, let's just like draw like crazy shit. It's like just pretty much like just draw. It's like just take our exercise. It's like just use our exercise, like those square exercise books and we pretty much like draw like unused exercise books and just draw crazy. It's like crazy stories about it. It's usually stuff like a really epic adventure stories with like crazy things happening. But it's like with all, it's like anything fun that we can think of, we just dump it in without caring about really like lengthy, uh, over, it's like interconnecting story arcs or anything. It's just like always fun. It's because it's almost, it's almost like the Western Western cartoon style, where it's sort of, sort of like um, probably the Flintstones, where it's like every single, even in adventures that they are take, undertaking, it's almost like very episodic and it's like nothing that connects to each other other than the characters are being the same. And at the same time, it's like also or other than otherwise, it's like we just throw in like a, some sort of like a wacky races, like like crazy. It's like you throw in crazy characters into crazy cars and doing like crazy fun stuff. It's like you just throw them like crazy challenges and think of creative ways to sort of like let them overcome certain problems that like hinders their way. And the second is like the second and the, the by the time when I was I kind of fortunate because it's like I was born in the town where. In, it's like there's uh, someone who operates a computer shop and there's another guy who owns like he's really into computers so it's like he has like the it's like the 286 and the 386 is like everything with the mono monochrome computers where the screen is just green and black and anyone remember those days it's like you'll be i have orange and black oh my god fancy yeah those are really fancy stuff so it's like it's like my it's like that it's like my mom saw like I don't I don't know how my mom got the foresight seeing that computers is going to be the next interesting thing. So it's like she just let us like pay like thirty or forty bucks to let us learn computers like uh, twice every month. So we kind of started out like like okay we want to play games as like you know kids it's like they just want it's like when given it's like given them a computer it's just a toy it's like. We just like being taught. It's like okay, just hey, can we can we can we play games? Can we play games? It's like yeah, then it's like then after a while, it's like okay, the teachers all relented. Let us play like uh, entertainment games, uh, probably like adventure. It's like those adventure stuff. But after a while, my mom saw. Don't know how she knows it, but she's kind of discovered that we all the time we are playing games. And I like tell her it's like hey you. Like, she's pretty much like going straight up to the teacher and tell us tell him to teach us something more productive. So what we ended up learning is Word Star, Lotus One Two Three, Windows Ninety Five. Well, it's like you, you can imagine it's like it's to us it's like you can just imagine like kids doing productive learning productivity software. It's almost like uh, okay, <laughs> what are we going to do with it? But it's like we still kind of content because it's like the, the teacher still let us have, have our game time in the end. But it's like one the one of the most interesting technology that I got in like the, the moment that I touch it is actually a handheld scanner. It's not like, it's like in the past it's like when flat bed, flat bed scanners where you just put the paper and just like that scan is like when it's, that was expensive and the cheaper ones were actually the ones that you saw like hold it up and pretty much like <coughs> click a button and just like scan it down. Scan it just it's like to me it's like it's almost like magical. It's almost like imagining it's like you draw whatever you want. Then hand it out to our teacher. Our teacher then our teacher say, okay, you put your scanner over here on top of the paper, click on it, scan down, 
and just to see as you sort of like scroll slowly scroll away. you have to be careful because it's like <laughs> any jitter will sort of like will screw up your pictures in, in the computer so like, as you sort of like see as you scan and the picture is starting to scroll down like slowly and see the pictures forming it's almost like seeing a fluoride being developed in front of your eyes it's almost like very it's, it's a magical feeling that you can't really express like the it's like until you saw like you see it for the first time it's too worse it's like wow and having then it's like having it in in ms paint and you pretty much like click on the buckets all the and using spray cans to spray colors into it it's too to us it's like it's fascinating so just to so it's to me, it's, so it's like that got me into an interesting blend of like arts and technology in the first place. So as I sort of progressed like six years into primary school, finished UPSR, unfortunately I had to go into, not really unfortunately, but fortunately we get into remove class where we can pretty much slack off and pretty much play all day <laughs> before we saw like it. So it's like, as we go into secondary school, it's like, then it's like uh, the competition and the need for um, academic uh, achievement was like way higher at that time and point. So, so it's like then my mom was like, okay, it's like no more classes for you guys. You pretty much like go start. It's like take tuition classes like the whole day. It's like Monday to Friday is probably English. Uh, Tuesday is Thursday is for English. Then Monday, Thursday, Friday is for some other random <laughs> subjects kind of thing. But Somehow it's, like, it's interesting because it's like as although as like, I've been loaded by it's like as much as I hate tuition and everything, but it's like it doesn't really like feel that bad because it's like all the while I have been it's like drawing was becoming more of a secondary skill for me. It's almost like a hobby where it's like I can if I feel like the class is dry and everything, I can sort of like escape into my small little world just drawing stuff. I mean it's like I, it's like these kind of these are kind of the things that I saw like just draw and. Um, the sketch out. It's like then like my brain just goes into like totally into a fantasy world where like everything is like everything is colorful. It's like me. It's like every single character that I built has a specific purpose. They are fighting for for something. This is a very interesting. It's like you just it's, it's, you just, you no longer live. It's like when you sort of like you let your your hands sort of like start start to draw stuff. You don't think about the real world as in, but rather it's like the world. What if the world is something else that we are being transported into? So imagine, so it's like it's almost like a very, it's like it's a gift that was given to us, like on a very, very early age, and we're very like proud to have parents who are really, uh, really supportive and let us all like she knows that we draw all the time and it's like totally like to let books like <laughs> to dust somewhere, but it's like she she let us like experiment with stuff, but at the same time. Uh, at this, at this time, it's also a very interesting point where it's like um, I got my first personal computer, and that is like it is like back in the days when it's like computers are actually more affordable. It's like this instead of like used to be eight thousand range now. It's like at that time it's like Pentium one three three. I think uh, it's around like four thousand something, and I'm kind of lucky being like I having an aunt who is willing to sort of like um, buy us a computer as a gift because she knows us taking computer classes and everything and. She thought it would be a good idea for us to have a computer to sort of learn our, on our own. And indeed we do, because it's all about the case, again. <laughs> it's, and it's like, it's, it, and because it's like, it, it just gives us the motivation, because it's like the games are just so fun back in the 90s. It's like, could you imagine it's like not playing games for one day? It's like all the RPGs, all the, uh, when 3D graphics was in the in thing and everything was like, it's, then you were, uh, Pretty much like following up with keeping following up with things like uh, like the voodoo cast to the voodoo two cast. Then you start with the savage four. The the Nvidia cast are starting to roll out. Like like like. I mean, it's a really interesting time when games are starting to go from really pixelated graphics to something is starting to slowly go into the three D realm where it's like it's no longer two dimensional. It's our game plays are more like three dimensional. It's like what not to love about computer games at that time. So at that time, it's like, and it was interesting because it's like uh, if you if you if as much as computers are like cheap, but it's like we don't have any income at all. So it's like if the computers is like if our computers broke down and everything, it's like uh, we it's like my mom was all like, uh, no, we are not going to send it to the computer repair shop. It's going because it's going to cost us like fifty bucks just to check. And in case of some hardware like failures or whatever, it will cost another two hundred to like five hundred bucks. It's like. 
uh, okay, then it's like that's the time when you start, start to learn how to troubleshoot things to, to a point where it's like, then you know, okay, what does, how do you install software? How to buy pirated software as well? <laughs> <laughs> Back then it was in Para, it's like you had to go to uh, Ipo and probably that was like Phone Computer Center where it's like, where that's where all the pirated stuff are. <laughs> then it's like, then you learn how to learn, install software, uninstall, it's like if you don't want them, how to uninstall it. In case of Windows 95, you know after a while the PC was all like slow down after a long while, then it's like, okay, it's time to format the PC. Oh, it's back up, it's like it's going back full performance again. It's like those, it's like, and we sort of like go deep and it's like, okay, we need to buy a Voodoo card kind of thing. How can we buy it secondhand so that it's like 200 bucks cheaper? So it's like we start, start to go to Lelong and I know, know how to buy stuff from Lelong, how to install these kind of cards into your PC without like uh, frying your computer totally. <laughs> So it's almost like it's learning, so it's like actually sort of, because it's like you're trying to, because the computer itself is a great motivator, it, it's like just the games are great motivators for us, and it is, it's like me, by us, I mean it's like me and my uh, younger siblings, it's like my half a brother and a sister, who also like games as well, it's like we play like two players and everything. So we saw like trying to bridge, it's like trying to solve problems with each other, we read computer magazines with each other together and everything. But what, what I do is like that's and the more interesting is like one of the more interesting skills that I end up like uh, acquiring during my secondary school years is actually uh, writing. How that got about is actually is very interesting because it's like we had, during my high, uh, my secondary school years it's like I have a really passionate, I mean really really passionate uh, Chinese teacher who is into modern Chinese literature, and uh, to describe it's like uh, his name is Monkey Bob. Uh, to imagine how it looks like, it's pretty much like a bit like Wuhan, but with <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to say, sorry, I have to use that because it's like a pretty much it's like a, not balding hair, but it's like at least it is not. <laughs> but it's like he has his, he has a beard, like stocky, and he's like he's, he's, he's like very warm and everything. It's like oh, it's like he's really passionate about like Chinese literature. It's like a, so it's like he's pretty much like. Convinces us like well, we should have more Chinese literature <coughs> people to write Chinese literature at all times, and we and we know as like Asian students is like uh, no, no, <laughs> stay away from me. But it's like so the way he does it is sort of like it's interesting because it's like okay, he doesn't do it directly. The way he does does it is like oh, there's this uh, Chinese poem competition. The main prize is three hundred ringgit. And it's like even you could even consolation price is like even if there was like twenty bucks, <laughs> and to us it's like it's almost like driving in the way it's like giving you hope that you are going to win the prize, but at the same time it's like you are foolish enough to believe that you are able to win the prize so long you put enough effort into it. So that got us into like writing, like constantly it's like constantly like trying trying out for competitions, trying to write more about it, without being know that we are actually being like bribed, but without the actual guarantee of getting the prize. <laughs> so you know, it's so, but it's, like, it's it's very interesting because it's like uh, that actually ended up got giving me the opportunity where he's all like he's so into Chinese literature that where he said, okay, we are going to come up with an annual Chinese it's like a magazine, an annual magazine with all the uh, works that is done by students. It's like uh, all the novels, all the poems. It's like co collect these kind of literary works from students. It's like compile them in a magazine. And it's like I was in some sort of a very unique place where it's like I know how to draw, so that means I know some art. I know how to use Microsoft Word enough to come up with uh, very interesting designs and pretty much force Microsoft Word to come up with interesting designs. <laughs> And I'm also into writing myself, so it's like I know how to present writing in an interesting way. So it's like that got it's like with it's like it's almost a combination. It's like it, with this is it's like it's almost like being stumbled upon a skill, a craft where all these skills sort of like just combine together into something, and we pretty much uh, come up with a. It's like the magazine was out and it's like pretty and everything. I unfortunately yeah, this like a but that got is like a, that this is one of my, my orientation booklet that I done for my university back in the day. So it's like actually it's like that experience actually helped me to understand what print design is about. What, what is it's like uh, what 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 the hell is like why Microsoft Word is a totally bad idea to publish this <laughs> direct stuff in and come up with interesting designs and it's like you know what kind what is um, 
CM, uh, CMYK separate color separation and why it's like RGB is a stupid idea to like pick up photos and you have to make sure your photos are 100 dpi instead of like stupid 72 dpi so you can't pick random 70 is like really tiny gif and enlarge them I expect that to be pretty it's like it's not going to happen so it's like in this it's like kind of, it's like we sort of learn these kind of small little things as we as we go as like as we sort of go along with this project and I'm also like quite uh, quite uh, fortunate to have like a team of other people some people who are more into drawing and some people are more into writing and trying to collaborate with each other and come up with a magazine that we are proud of I mean it's like uh, in we still have very fond memories about coming out with this magazine in the first place. And uh, fast forward yet another five years and into my university years, it's like uh, that is like this time when it's like uh, when computers are it's like that is like I kind of wanted to go into the art stream. It's like going good. It's like despite I'm being a science stream and I wanted to learn arts and everything, uh, wanted to like enroll in the, the one academy <laughs> cough. And the only thing that was that, that stopping me, tuition is too expensive. My mom is a bit iffy about it. So I'm kind of coerced, it's not really, it's like half coerced into going into Tha College because it's like pretty much practically I can get the tuition for free when I study in Tha College because of my, my, my SPM results are good enough for me to uh, gain full scholarship in the first place. So it's like, uh, and studying computer science, which I'm like, okay, I'm having interest in compu computers, but it's like, what I didn't know that what I enrolled myself into is the fact that it's like, when I start learning programming, it actually opens up a whole new world to me, where it's like, it's all about, it's like, you start to see how programs are being developed, how they are run, and it's like, you can see, it's like, oh, it's like, it's not like, it's like, whatever program that's, whatever games or programs that's running on your computer is not, by magic, somebody think about it, think through. It was a series of problems that needs to be solved, and they saw like translated into code. So it's like at that time, it's like it's so interesting to a point where my drawing is like I don't get that much time to draw or probably like write. But at the same time, it's like I still maintain it because it's like I still have my teenage angst and it's like I have my love, love, long stories and like this, this, this girl didn't love, love me. That guy didn't like care about me at all. The world is all worthless and everything. But it's like it gives, it is. But it's like these kind of habits all are just carried through. But it's not really like the part. It's like it's kind of like taking. It's like taking. It's like in the back channel. It's always constantly in the back channel that's constantly going on. And the interesting thing is that uh, as I go on, it's like I accidentally got into a new hobby. Uh, essentially, it's like I'm. That I found out that I'm in, really into dance simulation games. It's like that would be uh, Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> The part that I got is that they got, it's like that's the interesting part. It's like uh, this this is important actually. It's like uh, because because of uh, this this kind of dance simulation. It's like uh, that actually got me into learning videography, and actually it's like that's why I saw like be able to bring in all my it's like all my videography skills. is actually it's like from back camp or edit camp. It's actually from my experience in doing that's revolution. yeah that simulation. But it's like reason why I, I pretty much give you a background because it's like uh, at that time it's like uh, two things. Uh, um, I'm Particularly, really into a dance called Parapara. It was uh, essentially it's like a, some of you pretty much know this. Like if you are pretty much Asian, but if you are not, uh, just to go through, it's pretty much uh, club dance in uh, Japan. Two things you need, uh, a few things you need to know about the uh, Parapara is that uh, it was a club dance, and every single uh, dance is done. It has a fixed choreo. It's like every single song has a fixed choreography, and it was danced to a particular type of music called Eurobeat and you can only buy it in Japan. And the only way is like in order for you to learn these choreographies is to actually obtain club videos from Japan and into Malaysia kind of thing. It's like, just consider it's like everything in Japan, Japan, Japan equals exchange rate 3.2 at that, I think at that time equals very, very expensive. And it's a very, very lonely hobby to engage in because it's like, you are pretty much the only one who's, sit, who's who knows about it and it's like there's nobody else. And that's where the internet goes in, where it's like I pretty much stumble upon like community sites who equally like Spark R as like as I do, but it's also like they are like really like lone lone stars across 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 the globe. And the way we saw like build up share camaraderie is sort of like 
we saw like film ourselves doing the dances and pretty much like uh, pretty much post online and everybody started watching oh it's like you do this it's like you're, you're really good or they will comment on things like this and everything so it's like we try it's like each of us kind kind of do like our own refilming of um, stuff and at the same time it's like at, but at, I say it's like uh, there's only that much songs that we can ab able to obtain and eventually you'll get bored by the same fixed list of songs so it's like we ended up like doing like our own uh, original choreography and everything so at that time it's like we constantly think it's like we constantly pretty much like i wouldn't say competition but it's like we know it's like oh you dance it this way we dance it this way let's copy it's like we try to learn from each other what how, how, how what's constitute a good dance in the first place and honestly it's like it's a very interesting experience and as I saw, like just go, I probably show you a video if I have time, but uh, probably I'm like nine twenty-five. But uh, just to pretty much wrap up everything up, like just fast forward like another 10, 10 years until today. I saw like reason I, went, I, I go through the whole story up until this point is <laughs> like I saw like this actually got me into thinking. It's like, actually as I sort of developed this talk, I just sat down and thinking, what actually got me motivated into learning such a diverse. <coughs> really broad range of skills that that seemingly like like totally different it's like totally like one thing like <coughs> graphics is one thing writing is totally different thing it's like and uh, video is a totally different thing it's like how what got me into like constantly learning constantly learning new things and after a while i saw like it dawned upon me that actually all the while because of my introverted nature it's like despite me not liking like being in crowds, being with people, it's like not comfortable among like really big crowds and people. It's like I still having problems like communicating with people. I still have a really innate desire to express myself in the way uh, where people saw I like, can eat. is able to see from my it's like pretty much express myself to show that uh, what I know, what are my fears, what is like what I'm interested, what gets me going, what am I imagining, what am I thinking. It's like. As one of the, I think this is one of the really native desires that we are it's like that's in us, which unfortunately I think it's like seeing like the, pe the people that are surround us is like they are being suppressed of this capability because it's like they fear of being ridiculed, they are fear of being like saying that they are being suck and everything. They have that fear of failure and everything, and being con it's like being condemned of their own art and self expression, and this is not a good thing. As it's like it's just human nature to express to to desire to be appreciated to feel that there's a place in on this plane of existence, knowing that you are affecting some other people in some other way, and to do that is to to be able to communicate and to express yourself in a way, and it's called with this like innate desire going on it's almost like it's it just it's, it's almost like a, a motivation that it's pretty much turns by itself it's it's like nobody is like it doesn't need anybody to tell you what to do it's like you feel you want you you want to be accepted you want to be heard and everything is like you must constantly learn how to improve your craft how would you constantly learn new things to get people more people excited because it's like if you constantly do the same things people will get bored eventually so it's like it's constantly it's like you would start to only constantly learn con constantly like hone into your skills and constantly thinking of ways to contribute value to the world and that pretty much got me into my current field of doing uh, web app development and i'm really proud of it because that's got me it's like that is whatever i've learned in the past that's got me here and i'm really passionate about bringing my skills and helping the world in expressing in themselves not only through their left brain, the law logical side of the brain, but also their right brain where it's, like it's all about uh, creativity and everything. And that's <coughs> my point of view about ed education. And, yeah. Thank you very much.